Hello. Welcome to the Heart of Westmoreland Mission Community Sunday service for the 30th of August. We meet in the presence of Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. This Sunday is the last Sunday in the Methodist Church year. And what a unique year it has been filled with challenges. But we have a God who is faithful, gracious and merciful. Our call to worship is from Hebrews 12. Let us fix our eyes upon Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So Jesus, by your wounded feet, direct our path. Jesus, by your pierced hands, move us to acts of compassion and love. Jesus, by your pierced side, purify our desires. And Jesus, by your broken heart, knit ours to yours forever. Let us pray. Thank you, God, that you do not call us to anything without giving us the resources to cope. You do not ask us to go anywhere that you have not been. You call us to take up our cross and to follow you. So, Lord, we come with fear and trembling, knowing, though, that ultimately your way is the best. Lord, you are with us. Help us to understand and obey your way. Amen. We hope that you'll be able to join singing with us in our opening hymn. So we come to God in prayer. Our prayers are confession and adoration. Let us pray. Eternal God, source of all power and love, forgiveness and hope, all praise and glory belongs to you. Eternal living God, Father, Creator, Jesus, Son and Saviour, Holy Spirit, ever-present help and guide. 
Today we lift our voices in praise to you and our hearts rejoice that you are our God. This day we humbly enter your majestic and holy presence with praise. We praise you because you've shown us in Jesus that you are not a distant and unfeeling God. In Jesus you shared our human life to the full, enduring pain, mental anguish and temptation. In Jesus' life, death and resurrection, you revealed to us the depth of your love and compassion for all who suffer. You are our refuge and strength in times of trouble. Grant, Lord God, that in all our joys and sorrows, we may put our trust in you, our faithful God, and grant that we may praise you as we ought, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful Father, in your presence and together with all your people, we confess our sins before you, seeking your grace and mercy. Lord God, you taught us to love you with our whole being. We confess that our discipleship has not been wholehearted. We've not taken up our cross and followed you with all our heart. Lord, have mercy. When we have been afraid of what others may think or say, when we've not borne witness to your love for them in Jesus, Lord, have mercy. Lord God, you taught us to love our neighbours as we love ourselves. We confess that we envy what others have. We are fearful of those who are different from us. We've been proud, angry or uncaring. Lord, have mercy. May we love others as you love us. Merciful Father, we know that in Jesus Christ you love and forgive. And we hear the words of Jesus Christ. Your sins are forgiven in my name. Help us, Lord, to walk renewed in faith, hope and courage. To take up our cross and willingly follow you all the days of our life and into eternity. To the glory of your name, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And so we come to the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Today's readings come from the Psalms and from Matthew's Gospel. They are read to us by the Reverend Jackie Betts and Mrs. Kath Thwaites. Following these, we will hear God's word to us today from the Reverend Dan Pattimore. Reading from Psalm 26, verses 1 to 8. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have led a blameless life. I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your love is ever before me, and I walk continually in your truth. I do not sit with deceitful men, nor do I consort with hypocrites. I abhor the assembly of evildoers and refuse to sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence and go about your altar, O Lord, proclaiming aloud your praise and telling of all your wonderful deeds. I love the house where you live, O Lord, the place where your glory dwells. Amen. The reading is taken from Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 to 28. Jesus predicts his death. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem 
and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, chief priests and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will find it. What good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world yet forfeits his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what he has done. I tell you the truth, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Amen. A lot of the common phrases that we use in everyday language actually find their roots back in the Bible. Things like the blind leading the blind, or fools rush in where angels fear to tread, or going the extra mile, or well, we all have our cross to bear. And in our reading from Matthew chapter 16, we see the background and the context for the last of those, we all have our cross to bear. And although it's often used in the context of somebody who's um, got an illness or um, some pain in their body and say, oh, well, we all have our cross to bear. And I'm not belittling that at all. Although it's often used in that context, that's not the original meaning. In that reading from Matthew, Jesus actually says, if we want to follow him, then we must deny ourselves and take up our cross. These are the words of the one we choose to follow. Jesus sacrificed himself for others and for the world and it's clear that he expects nothing less from his followers. That's why the rebuke is so strong when Peter tried to dissuade him from going to Jerusalem and facing the suffering that that's coming his way. It may lead to persecution, even to death, but it is the way to life, is what Jesus says. And that is true for us who follow him as well. It may lead to persecution, possibly even to death in some parts of the world today, but it's the way to life. Now, this is not an easy thing to hear, is it? We must deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow him. Why is this so important to Jesus? Why that stinging rebuke to Peter? Get behind me, Satan. You do not have in things mind of, uh, the, in your mind the things of God, but the things of, of man. Well, possibly because there's already so much suffering and brokenness in the world. And we must resist adding to that pain and suffering, even if it means that we have to suffer. In our Romans reading, some light, I think, it shines on this. Paul, who wrote Romans, knows all about suffering and persecution. I mean, he was one of the most severe persecutors of the early followers of Jesus. And when he himself began to follow Jesus, he began to experience persecution as well. It went with the territory. In fact, we find in 2 Corinthians this sort of litany 
of things that he suffered. He says, I have worked harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely and been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I've been constantly on the move. I've been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. I have laboured and toiled, and have often gone without sleep. I've known hunger and thirst, and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Paul knew what it was to uh, be persecuted or to suffer for his faith. Now, of course, the world says um, things differently to Jesus. Surprise, surprise. The world loves that saying from the Old Testament, which gives it a kind of a, a religious feel. You know the saying, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth? I still often hear that. But as someone once said, if we stick to that Old Testament maxim, we just end up with a lot of blind and toothless people. Jesus himself, in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 6, rejects that entirely. He says, you've heard that it was said, eye for eye and tooth for tooth, but I tell you, do not resist an evil person. Do not resist an evil person. I mean, come on. How do you do this? So Paul, the man who knew persecution, what's his response? Well, Paul rejects the way of revenge in getting your own back entirely. The world tells us that revenge is sweet and revenge is best served cold. But revenge is a disaster. It just multiplies pain and does not bring peace. Paul rejects the way of revenge utterly. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, he says. Sound familiar? Do not take revenge. Instead, he says, leave room for God. Do what is right. Give, serve, sacrifice. Don't believe that it's all for nothing, but believe that God has your life in his hands. Psalm 26, that we've heard read. The writer there is trusting God. Vindicate me, God. I am doing what is right and I am trusting you to do what is right. That's what we're called to. The way of Christ is the way of self-sacrifice and of service. And this is not easy. It's tough. Now, I struggle with it. I hate being wronged. I hate being swindled. I hate being treated badly. I hate being treated as a fool. Now, I may not go around physically assaulting people. But I can wield words pretty effectively. I find I'm constantly trying to keep my inner Basil faulty in check. And to do that, I have to stay alert to the warning signs and make an effort not to react. I mustn't take revenge in any form. W words, actions, makes no difference. But I've got to be alert. Now we have a dog. He's a big dog, He's very strong. And when we're out on walks, we often meet other dogs. And most of the time, that's fine. Most of the time's not a problem. Most of the time, it's wagging tails and sniffs. But not every time. Sometimes, as a dog's approaching, 
his hackles rise. And when his hackles rise, we have to watch out. We have to be ready because he's big and he's loud. It's hard when we are wronged not to snap back when we're provoked and our hackles rise. But we have to somehow recognize what's going on in ourselves and not react. Put in the effort to not make things worse. So I wonder, what are the warning signs for you? What are the feelings that churn around inside you that show that you're about to lose it? And what can you do to hold back? There's enough damage and brokenness in the world. Jesus doesn't want us to make matters worse. He expects his followers to show restraint. This is sacrifice. And this is service. His way is a way of forgiveness and love. My prayer is that his way will be our way. Amen. Thank you, Dan, for those challenging words. And as we reflect on them, we come to our prayers of intercession. When I say, Lord, this is our prayer, would you respond, help us to know and to do your will. Let us pray. You, Lord, are the way. And though you are no easy way, we pray that the world might follow your path, the path of suffering that leads to salvation, the path of sorrow that leads to joy, the path of death that leads to life, and the path of self-giving that leads to true gain. We pray for all those in our world who undergo suffering and are prepared to die, opposing injustice, oppression, and the greed of others. We pray for all those who sorrow at the evil in the world and the misfortunes of others. We pray for those who sorrow, sorrow alongside the suffering and bereaved. We pray for all those who give themselves in order to serve and care for and love those in need. And we pray that we too may have the courage to walk on Christ's way. Lord, this is our prayer. Help us to know and to do your will. You, Lord, are the truth. And though your truth is often hard to perceive, we pray that the world might be illuminated by its light. Hypocrisy and falsity exposed, eternal values glimpsed, love's power made known, mindless prejudices dissolved, honesty and goodness, compassion and understanding revealed as the true wisdom, allied to the wisdom of God. We pray for all those who seek after truth and wisdom, for those who seek God and for those who share God's word and his love with others. We pray for all those who shun the truth about themselves or the reality of suffering and death. We pray for all those who teach and preach, that they may be encouraged to search honestly for what is right and good in our lives. We pray for ourselves, that we may have the courage to live according to the truths we see in Christ. Lord, this is our prayer. Help us to know and to do your will. You, Lord, are real life. And although that life challenges our comfort and complacency, we pray for your life for the world. Life with purpose. Life with joy. Life with peace. Life with adventure. Life shared with others and with you. We pray for those who are depressed and anxious for whom life at the moment is meaningless and agonising. We pray for those who have been called by God to live in difficult and dangerous or heartbreaking situations. We pray for those who are lonely or discontent, avoiding life and other people out of distrust and fear. We pray for ourselves that we may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live lives together in unity 
in Christ Jesus. Lord, this is our prayer. Help us to know and to do your will. Father, we pray for our families, our churches. We pray for those who are in the places of turmoil in the world, for those who face coronavirus, and for those, Lord, who face trouble and discontent in their communities. We pray particularly for peace in America. And Lord, we pray for our schools as they return this week. We ask these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. We listen and join together in singing our closing hymn. Thank you for joining us this week for our service of worship here in the heart of Westmoreland. We pray that God would richly bless you and fill you with his peace. In a moment we'll say the grace, but I just point out behind me is a picture of the path passing through the cross and on to life eternal. So we share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you in this coming week and fill your life with his peace and joy as you follow him. Amen.